Okay, number 11, solve. It says, you know, X in real numbers. I get in terms of one, one function, and I'm going to get in terms of terms of sines. So sine squared of X minus, well, the cosine is 1 minus sine squared. And that equals 0. I'm going to simplify that. I would get 2 sine squared of an X minus 1 equals 0. I'm going to try to solve for sine sine squared. Well, add 1 to both sides and divide by 2, you get 1 over 2. And that means sine of x equals plus or minus 1 over root 2. Now certainly, I always suggest you, you know, look at a picture of this thing, the sine function on the interval between 0 and 2 pi. And you notice that you know, 1 over root 2, there's going to be four places where it hits. And what's convenient about this, I know the ratio 1 over root 2, so I know the reference is 45 degrees. We'll go back to speaking radian later. So what are you going to get? You can get 45 degrees. The next one is going to be in the second quadrant with a reference of 45, so 135 degrees. And the next one's going to be in the third quadrant, so that's going to be, um, let's see, 180 plus 45, 225 degrees. And the next one's going to be 360 minus 45, which is 315 degrees. What I notice about these things is they're going up by 90 degrees. So this goes up by 90 degrees, this goes up by 90 degrees, and this goes up by 90 degrees. They're all going up by 90 degrees, by the way. Right, 45 to 135 is 90 up, 135 to 225 is 90 up, 225 to 315 is 90 up. So I know my general answer. What's my general answer? It's going to be 45 degrees plus 90 degrees N with the understanding that N is any given integer. 1, 2, 3, 0, whatever. If you want to write down in radians, it's going to be pi over 4 plus pi over 2 n. Again, these are both good answers over here. By the way, n is still going to be an integer. Let's go to the next one, multiple choice. Um, problem with multiple choices, I, I, I got to do it, and then look for the answer. Common denominator, let's write this down. It would be sine x, and then it's going to be times 1 minus cosine x. What's the numerator going to be? 1 minus cosine x squared plus sine x squared. All right, I've got to expand it because I don't see that answer. And you, squaring that 1 minus cosine x is going to be 1 minus 2 cosine x plus cosine squared x and then plus sine squared x. And this is all over sine x times 1 minus cosine x. I still don't see the answer. What I'm noticing though is Pythagorean identity. Uh, I'll point it out to you that this is just, whoops, sorry about that, that this is just the number 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. And I notice that I got a factor of 2 common on top. So let's write this down. You get 2, and again, I just added those together. I found that that's 2. Factoring it out, you get 2. It would be 1 minus cosine of x. What do you get on the bottom? Sine x over 1 minus cosine x. There's a conditional cancellation, this over here, and you're left off with 2 over sine of x, which we know better to be 2 cosecant of x. And I do see that, and that's letter A. All right, let's keep moving. Let's do the next one. Uh, substitution problem. I'll plug it in for you. I want to point out that this thing here is 100 x squared is equal to 169 secant squared theta. Well, what do you get there? 169 secant squared theta minus 169. I'm going to factor that. What do you get? 169 secant squared theta minus 1. I recognize that, and hope you recognize it too. That's the tangent squared. Now the square root of 169 is 13, and in this region the tangent uh, is positive, so I can write this down pretty simply. It's just going to be tangent of theta. All right? So we did that. Let's move on. Next question. A little more difficult. Now, I'll point out why it's more difficult. Students, they get confused by these things. Very similar to what we've done in class, by the way. 
But let me write this over here, 3 pi over 5. And I'm going to write this down as 180 degrees over pi. That's a unit conversion factor. Pi's cancel. 5 goes away 36 times. And 3 times 36 is 90 and um, 18, so 108 degrees. All right? Let me write this down as the arc sine of the sine of 108 degrees. All right? So, you know, before I do anything, I want, I want to point out that um, if I were looking at the sun of 108 degrees, um, you know, I know it's in the second quadrant over here, and it's got a reference, you know, 172 degree reference, right? I know that much. Now, if I were looking at the invertible region of the sine function, by the way, the, the sine in this quadrant is positive. So I'm looking at this over here, and what I gotta realize is that the ratio is positive. It's over here somewhere. It's gonna be this reference angle. So what do you get over here? It's gonna be 72 degrees now. No, I didn't need to know the ratio to do that, all right? If you wanna write down the radian measure though, you could do this again, 72 degrees times pi over 180 degrees. You may realize that 72 and 180 degrees by, um, by 36 degrees, you would get two pi over five. This answer is acceptable. This answer is acceptable. Either answer you put down and get full credit for it, all right? So let me go to the next question. Next question, again, another you know, uh, equation, and they're asking me to solve the equation. So let's take a look at it, and I'll write it down as a zero product rule if I can, and this is sine squared x, and then you get minus four sine x plus one equals zero. Appears to be factorable. It appears to be a perfect square, actually. And what would that equal zero when the sine function takes on the value one half? Again, my recommendation to look at a picture and realize that it happens two times in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. What's the reference angle, though? Well, I hope you give it some thought. I'll put the degree measure down first, and that would be uh, a 30 degree, right? That's the reference angle. If you want to write that in radian measure, it's pi over 6. So it's in the first quadrant, so the angle is going to be pi over 6. But it's also in the, um, the second quadrant. That's between uh, 90 and 180. So it's actually going to be 150 degrees. And what's 150 degrees? It's actually 5 pi. It's 5 times 30 over 6. Again, my recommendation, look at the key, see if you can see that. And I see it. It's D. Now, granted, sometimes people make mistakes in uh, picking the wrong one. Just be careful, all right? All right, another solving problem, and I'll write this one down over here. This is 2 sine x cosine x plus cosine x equals 0. Factor out cosine x times... 2 sine x plus 1 equals 0. I know there's uh, one of the solution problems is when cosine of x equals 0, and the other one is when sine x equals minus 1 half. Now, again, I'd recommend looking at a picture, and the picture looks sort of like this over here for cosine. When does it become 0? At two, two spots, at pi over 2 and at 3 pi over 2. All right, when does the sine become minus? Well, it's got to be in the third and fourth quadrant. So it's over here. What's the reference again? The reference is still 30 degrees. I know I go back and between languages of degrees and radian, but it's in, um, you know, between 180 and 270, so it's going to be 210 degrees. Or if it's in the fourth quadrant, it's 330 degrees, all right? And I want to point out, and we just did this, by the way, it's just pi over 6. So this can be 7 pi over 6, and this is 11 pi over 6, all right? There's four solutions. Let's write them down. doesn't matter what order you put them in, and I, I, I really mean that. It doesn't matter to me. I, 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 it's not like you have a long listing over here, any order you like, by the way. So pi over 2. Uh, let's see. Um, 7 pi over 6. 3 pi over 2 and 11 pi over 6.
Again, I don't care what order you put it in. Let's go to the next one. And next one says use law of cosines. So I'm going to draw a picture. Of this. I don't mean to confuse anyone, but there's feet and inches over here, not to convert them. So I'm going to I'm going to go to go to inches because it's easier for me, and because I don't want to do a fraction. So I'll, I'll do my triangle now. My triangle is going to look like, you know, I'll put A down first, and A is 12 inches, and this is what A is. All right. I got an angle B which is 60. I'm going to say 60 something like this over here. And this is angle B, right? Now side C is eight inches. And you know, I'm gonna say this is side C over here. I'll write eight inches down. And this is side C, right? I'm gonna get my race rack because I wanna put the A next to the 12 inches. And what do they wanna know? They wanna know B. So they wanna know this thing over here. Well, let's write this down, law of cosines, B squared is equal to a squared, that's 12 squared, plus the, plus the c squared, which is eight squared, minus two times the a, which is 12, times the c, which is eight, times the cosine of the angle b, which is 60 degrees. Let's see if we can do that. b squared, that's 144, plus 64, minus, 2 times 12 times 8. The cosine of 60 is not that bad, actually. It's just 1 half. It's a nice, easy number. Now, granted, I, I do want to do the arithmetic, by the way. And let's see, what do you get? Uh, that's going to be 208. And the two cancels here. And you get minus, let's see, 80 and 16, 96, right? Let's keep moving forward. B squared, let's see, 104. I guess 112, right? Am I making a mistake there? Let me see if I made a mistake here. 144, 64, minus 96, and let's see, 208 minus 96, 104, yeah, 112. And what's B gonna be equal to? It's the root of 112. All right, I want to go through the simplification of that, though. 1, 1, 2, divide by 2. That's going to give you 56. I'm going to divide that by 2. That's 25. Uh, let's see, 28. Isn't that convenient? 2 goes into that 14 times, and 2, 7. So we're going to get, this is actually 4 root 7s. That's acceptable. That's acceptable. All right, let's go to the next one which is number 18, and they tell me something. They tell me the sine of S is equal to minus one-half. I don't know the cosine of S yet. We'll talk about that in a moment. They tell me the sine of T is one quarter, but again, I don't know the cosine of T yet. Let's read it. And the sine of S, they say S is in the fourth quadrant. So the cosine in the fourth quadrant is a positive number. And I hope you have the Pythagorean theorem down now. I know this is two, so it's gonna be four minus one, which is three, so root three. All right, let's do the, let's do the T. What quad, that's in second quadrant. And the cosine in the second quadrant is negative. Denominator is four. So it's 16 minus one, which is 15, so root 15. So what I gotta do now is I gotta do cosine of S plus T, which is cosine S, cosine T minus sine S, sine T. Now let's write this down. Cosine of S is root three over two. The cosine of T is minus root 15 over four. Then you get minus the sine of s, which is minus one half, and the sine of t, which is one quarter. Well, I got the same denominator, which is eight. That's convenient. And what do you get? You get root three times root 15, which is gonna be 45, minus root 45. And 45's got a nine in it, so three root fives. And over here you get plus, uh, because you know it's minus one, but it's gonna be uh, a minus minus one, which is plus one. 
you know, clean up a tiny little bit because I don't like the way it looks. It's one minus three root five over eight. Let's see if that's listed. And I see that listed as D. All right, let's keep moving on and see if there's another question. And I think there is another question. And this is question number 19. I think it might be the last question. I'm not sure. Let me look. No, we have 20. I'll go to 20 then. Let's do this over here. Again, it gives me the tangent of theta, which is minus 4 over 3. It says it's in the fourth quadrant. I do a little picture of that. I'm not saying it's a great picture, but enough to me figure this thing out over here. I know there's going to be a point over here. And certainly looking at it, I know the x is positive. And what's the x going to be? 3, or the, or the sys and the ordinance is going to be minus 4. All right, what's the r for this one over here? Well, 9 plus 16 is 25, so the r is going to be 5. 3, 4, 5. Nice, easy number. So we're going to give you your sine of theta. That's going to be what? Minus 4 fifths. And the cosine of theta is going to be 3 fifths. Let's write this down. The sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta. Cosine theta. Let's write this down. 2. The sine of theta is minus 4 fifths. And the cosine of theta is 3 fifths. What do you get there? We get 25 in the bottom. And let's see, 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24, so minus 24. All right, let's do cosine of 2 theta. We have three different identities for this. Uh, the one I like to use is um, 2 cosine squared theta minus 1, 2. What's the cosine squared? Uh, the cosine is 3 fifths, right? And let's write this down. So it's going to be 2 times 9, which is 18, 20 fifths. And 1 is actually just 25, 20 fifths. So you can get minus 7, 20 fifths. All right, this one's done. Now let's do the tangent of 2 theta, which is sine 2 theta over cosine of 2 theta. No need for a new formula. What's cosine of 2 theta? Minus 24 over 25. And the cosine of 2 theta is minus 7 over 25. What do you get there? You get actually 24 over 7. All right, let's go to the next question. And the next question is, you know, um, the, the maximum value of g is obtained at. Well, one thing is I know is a sine function. Sine functions look like this over here. And the maximum value is going to occur here. And, the, you know, I hope you realize in a parent sine function, the maximum occurs at, uh, you know, pi over 2. So I wonder when this equals pi over 2. Let me write this over here. When does it equal pi over 2? It's when x equals pi over 40. It's right here. And we're done. Thank you.